Hello guys and welcome back to another one of my videos. So our video today is going to be the review of the SoShine 9V lithium ion battery charger. Uh, so basically I use some of these batteries, these some rechargeable 9V batteries for my multimeters and some other appliances I've got. Um, since I work in electronics these things go pretty fast. So one of the things I did recently about, well, for the last year or so, is I got some of these batteries, 9 volts batteries. I got some SoShine ones, which seem to be the brand of the charger. And I also got some cheap ones. Um, and I found them to be satisfactory in most cases. However, I keep getting emails and, and notes about these batteries failing and I really didn't knew what this was about because my units have been have been fine really. So I went ahead and um, got myself one of these chargers, um, you know, to see if that could actually be the problem. So how do I charge these things? This is the most important thing. So the way I charge these things is I got a lab power supply, and basically I do I charge them just as any other lithium battery. So I put 8.4 volts and I limit this thing to maybe 200, 300 milliamps maximum, and I just let them charge until they. So obviously, um, the battery is going to draw constant current, and when it's fully charged, is going the power supply is going to limit the the supply to 8.4 volts until it starts drawing zero current. So pretty fun. So let's see what these things have got inside. So inside one of these batteries, so what it has is it has two lithium battery cells. Uh, they're rated at 600 milliamps. Uh, then along with the terminals we have a battery monitoring circuit right in there. So if we take this thing out... we can actually see that there's got two ships in there. So each one of them is going to actually protect one of the batteries. And they're in series. As soon as one of the batteries reaches low voltage cutout or high voltage cutout, basically the ship is going to um, open the circuit and the battery gets disconnected. So no damage is done. Um, okay, so I got some of these charges, the SoShine, which seems to be a um, very reputable manufacturer along from the Chinese. So I thought, okay, you know, I'm pretty sick and tired of charging the batteries in my power supply. And then I forgot charging them and so on. So, you know, let's get one of these things. Um, so I actually have two. So this was the first unit that was delivered to me around a month ago. And the first thing that happened is it blew up one of my batteries. Okay. And the reason is... Um, there are some capacitors in here, and I replaced this with some ceramics, but um, the original capacitors were tantalum, so the capacitor literally exploded. Um, it even made some marks on the on the outer casing, so it literally exploded. I heard the bang, some burn smell, and that was the reason. So I replaced the capacitors with some ceramics, and what happens, you're going to see... Uh, by the way, this comes with the uh, European cable, so if you guys are in the UK, you're going to need some sort of adapter. I don't remember if it brought one, the first unit. The replacement one certainly did not. So we power this thing up. Okay, the light on is drawing like 1.6 watts, so it's not something you want to have plugged in all the time. Not energy star efficient or anything like that. And... Um, we got the multimeter in here. And what you can see in here is as soon as I plug this thing, you actually have 13 volts in here. And I said, whoa, crap. This is too much even for a nickel metal hydride battery, let alone for a lithium one. Um, so what did I do? So basically I thought, okay, so this must be some leakage from the DC-DC converter. Um, so I got some resistors in there. I loaded the primary power supply right in there. I'm not sure if it's visible. So you can see in here you have the power supply, the primary side. And in here you have like 13, 14 volts, which is the output of the DC-DC converter, isolation from the mains and so on. And in here you have two bug converters to the microprocessor to actually operate a charging algorithm. 
So I thought, okay, I'm going to load this power supply just in case, just to make sure it's not having any spikes or anything. And I'm going to load the output of the... Um, going to the battery so if you can see in there i'm not sure if it's really visible so in the bottom there's an smd resistor 100 ohms and on the top there's a capacitor just to smooth the thing um surprise surprise it still keeps operating at 12 volts so i went to my supply and i told him look this thing is faulty you know give me my money back or just send me another unit and they did they sent me a brand new shiny unit and okay, so I power this thing up. Okay, it draws 1.4 watts, so slightly less than the other unit, and basically because I don't have this loading circuit on there. Okay, so it's loading half a watt now. So you can see how much my circuit is actually loading. But if you go ahead and measure the output, again, you have 13 volts. Okay, let's put this in there. So I thought, what the hell is going on in here? And basically what happened is my batteries were fried because I have the BMS, so the, um, actually the protector is not the BMS. Um, and what happens is the battery is gonna charge and once it reaches, once one of the cells goes above 4.3 volts or so on, then basically this circuit is gonna open. And when it does, then you're gonna have 12 volts right across this thing. Um, and that will eventually happen because as you saw I loaded the other one with uh, 100 ohms resistors and it kept it really kept giving me 12 volts so it's not like the circuits got some leakage it's just the way it's designed okay so this is a 220 ohm resistor all right and I'm gonna plug it into here and you see then the charger detected the, the load and went into red and I'm drawing some power, so let's see, let's see what voltage we actually have in here. Okay, now we have 8 point something. But as you can see, it's not really very stable, you know, the voltage keeps changing and it's not really something I would like to give to a lithium battery. It just goes 8 point something, 7 point something. Uh, so this, this charge is not really a very high quality one. So let's let's just increase this to two resistors. So it's going to give me like something like 440 ohms. Uh, and you guys can calculate the current on this. I can do it in a bit. Um, Okay, so let's see what happens now. Okay, and we have 12 volts in there. So basically, the consumption increases to 1 watt, so I'm actually loading the circuit. Uh, but we have 12 volts in there, so let me get my calculator. Okay, so I equals to U over R, so we have 12 volts divided by 440, and that's going to give me 27 milliamps. Okay, so anything below 30 milliamps really is going to let this charger output, uh, well, really output 12 volts. So I can even check on this. So just that you guys see that I'm not making up any funny values or anything, or even the wrong resistors. Uh, okay, so let's get back to these ones in here. And we're going to lamps. Okay. I'm going to put it in there. And okay, I've got 24 milliamps, which is quite close to what we were, what we calculated. So basically, if you leave your batteries unattended and they finish charging and for some reason one of the cells is out of balance, what's going to happen is the protector is going to switch off, it's going to open up the circuit and the charger immediately is going to put 12 volts into this battery and that's what's going to happen is it's going to damage this circuit in here, the protector circuit for the battery and from the moment it damages that, basically your battery is scrapped. Now, this one that I've got in here, I actually measure one point something volts on one of the batteries and four point something on the other one. So let's give it a try. 
Okay, so this one has got 1.6 volts, it's completely ruined, so to speak. And this one in here is 3.7 volts, so it's got some considerable charge, maybe 30-40% out on it. Um, so basically what's going to happen is once you start to charge this battery in here, even if the protector circuit is good, um, this battery in here, which is the most discharged one, is going to start charging. And when this one reaches the top value, 4.3 or something, because uh, they never cut at 4.2, they just is overcharged, so they do a little bit more than 4.2. So basically this one is going to open and the charge is going to put 12 volts across it. That's really nasty. And that's what happened. I had a lot of batteries, really, and all of them got uh, the, 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 the monitoring circuits damaged. One of them actually was burning here. It was quite violent. Um, uh, and, well, and from that moment onwards, your battery is crap. Okay. I first noticed this because I noticed in the batteries um, they, the, the charger was giving the mass charge. However, when I measured them with the voltmeter, I was, I was getting something like 6, 7 volts, and I said, no way. So, this battery cannot be charged. So, the thing is, try to avoid these chargers, try to get a high quality one. And just to compare, basically, what I have in here is I have my digital camera charger, an icon, and this takes one of these batteries so it's 7.2 volts 1100 milliamps this is crap because basically inside you got two AA sized batteries 14500 lithium uh, and they are rated at 600 milliamps but nevertheless I use some of these on my multimeters on the past because they're relatively cheap so they cost three pounds so when these ones were not mainstream uh, basically I managed to open this casing and put this inside the voltmeter and they, they, they lasted quite a while but anyway now these are mainstream so not really worth to bother and this battery in here can I see yes this battery in here has got 7.58 so it needs to be charged and we have the charger in here when I plug the charger in Let's measure what voltage this charger is going to give us. And there you have it. If it doesn't detect the battery, it's going to give me zero. I was trying to do something. Okay, but let's put these two resistors on the draw 30 milliamps, just like we did before. And let's see what voltage we have in here. So just to compare that with a good charger. Have a lot of things because the charge is not detecting the battery, so immediately it goes into it switches off, which is what it should do anyway. If it doesn't detect the battery, it should either switch off or put the maximum voltage there. I think the problem with these charges in here is that they're they're rated for nickel metal hydride batteries, so they don't really know what voltage to expect in the first place, and that's why you should never get one of those things because they're pretty much rubbish. Okay, you can see them just with one resistor in here. Is actually putting 8.32 volts, which is a very good value. It's switching on and off, but nevertheless, 8.32 is an excellent value for the battery. And when I put the battery in there, it's going to start charging and so on. So, Basically, this is the review of the SoShine battery. Do not buy this. This is complete and utter rubbish and it's going to blow up your batteries. It might work a couple of times while the batteries are perfectly balanced and if you take them on on time, so it stops charging them. And, uh, okay, it's probably going to work fine enough as long as the, the BMS doesn't cut any of the batteries. But as soon as you get the batteries slightly aging, now you can see that there's only capacitors in there. There's, there's, there's no resistors. There's no balancing resistors in there. So what's going to happen is when, when these batteries get out of balance slightly and one of the, one of the ICs cuts, basically you're going to have 12 volts in here and it's going to fry that thing up. So there you have it. Alright, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.